Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last review, which was Blade Runner 2049, or 2049 if you like to call it that. Well, I decided to take a break from doing videos because I had to continue with all the assignment and quizzes, and I'm getting ready for my next midterm. My last midterm before I get to the final. I had to do some more reports too for my astronomy online class. And not only that, but I just found out that my aunt passed away at the age of 84. Yeah, Bertha Neri, which I call her auntie. Yeah, she was a sweet, kind, gentle, and wonderful lady that I ever had. You know, I used to go out with her a lot. She used to take care of us too, as a family. And and I used to go out with her too, you know, just to get something and help out with her. And and all the family did help her out after she's been developing an illness that she had. Just really sad to talk about it then. She will be deeply missed. So, throughout the entire week, yeah, we developed a, a funeral for her. We, we started to pray for her for nine days. And she's now up there in heaven. So, she'll definitely be remembered. Yeah. So, with that aside, I did watch some movies. Um, I know there's several of them I didn't review, and I know I just never have time because of it. But I thought it'd be okay to review one movie for now before I had to work on other stuff. And I just watched this last night. Um, I actually bought this at Dollar Tree for only a dollar. I found it uh, a few months ago. I didn't pick it up though because I wasn't so sure and I knew I made a mistake because even though it's it actually stars two great actors in it it's called Grand Piano it's a story about a young pianist who developed stage fight um, a few years ago after his performance now he makes a comeback to develop that only to discover that he's now the target of a sniper who tells him that if he plays the wrong note, he'll die. And this is basically a Hitchcockian type of thriller, which we often don't see nowadays, but considering the fact that this is made in 2013, it's very interesting, even though it is shot digitally by Super 35 and um, they did the best they can to make it look um, unique, uh, amazing, and and fast-paced too. Like it just kept you on the edge of your seat. Like you never know what's going to happen next. Yeah. So yeah, it has Elijah Wood playing the young pianist, and and John Cusack playing at the a professional assassin. Yeah, he's the sniper. This is the first time he played one because he did the movie uh, Gross Point Blank, which I really love. That was a fun comedy. But except he was the good guy in that movie. Here he's the villain. Yeah, it's a bit of a dead giveaway on that one, but then again, the trailer, and I saw the trailer too, and they already gave it away. So we already know already and this is a pretty good blu-ray release that I picked up for only a dollar and as you can see on the back a lot of features and and there's a lot of critic quotes too um, on the front and back so it looks really really neat and also a big surprise is that 
the writer of this movie is not other than Damien Chazelle. And for those who don't know, he went on to do two Oscar-nominated films, Whiplash and La La Land. So I was actually curious about this because considering that it's from the same writer and seeing that it stars those two actors, I figure why not? So I picked it up, I watched it last night, I enjoyed it, I really did. It was well done, well made and it really caught me by surprise right here. And. And I know, I know. Even though the movie is R-rated, uh, it does say for some language uh, on the back. It has some violence in the movie, but it's only a few violence. So, so it's kind of misleading a bit. But anyway, it stars uh, Elijah Wood, John Cusack, Carrie Boucher, Alice uh, Ella who actually uses the singing voice for Emma, that's her character. Temazine Egerton, Alan Leach, Don McManus, and Alex Winter from the Bill and Ted movies. It's great to see him again. I hardly ever see him nowadays. It's written by Damien Chazelle and is directed by Eugenio Mera. The movie begins when a young concert pianist named Tom Selznick, who's played by Elijah Wood, who had developed some stage fright while attempting to play a complex piece on the grand piano called La Sundaquette, which was composed by his late great mentor, pianist, and composer Patrick Gutterex. Five years later, he is slated to appear in Chicago for a comeback performance which, as a dedication to his mentor, Patrick, they actually acquired a massive media coverage due to the mysterious disappearance of his vast fortune that's being hidden somewhere. Tom actually returns to stage as it prompts to his encouragement by his wife, who's an actress and singer named Emma, who's played by Carrie Boucher. As he arrives at the theater, his best friend Norman, who is the conductor for the evening, played by Don McManus, offers Tom that he would actually play very well at the concert, so he'll get over his stage fright. But that wasn't until a house usher, played by Alex Winter, had hands Tom a folder of sheet music, and inside there was a manuscript for La Cinequette. He actually discarded it and decided to continue on with his piece on stage. And if that wasn't enough, he looked at the sheet music only to discover that there was something that's being written in red marker. As you look at the pages, he begins to read a fret that says, Play one note and you die. At first he believes that it was a prank, so he, he developably ignores it. Only he started to look at a few more pages with all these uh, further notes, only to discover that there's more frets, thinking that he was, if he was kidding or not. But he wasn't. Because not only that, but he's also threatening to kill Emma. He also found out that there's a laser dot that's being targeted on him. So now he's already starting to feel trembling that that he has to do what he had to say. But once he looks at some more sheets, he told them that go to the dressing room and grab the earpiece. So he rushes over there. He listens to it, and it turns out to be the voice of a professional assassin that's played by John Cusack. He's telling all the commands that Tom needs to do in order for him not to get killed. So he has to play the right notes as beautifully as possible so he doesn't uh, make any mistakes. 
And also, he also tells them that if you call for help, you will die. And he will kill his wife as well. And then he'll probably end up killing every other people out there who, who um, gets involved in it. Well, he, had, he didn't have any choice, but while he's still continuing with his performance, you know, along with the orchestra people around, he begins to take out his cell phone, decided to send a text to his best friend Wayne, who's played by Alan Leach, who also had his wife uh, Ashley, who's played by Tamazine Egerton, a yeah, bit of a bitchy kind of wife. Yeah, because he's always they're always going around bicking at each other. Well, to Wayne's embarrassment, um, he decided to get off, um, go to the exit, uh, trying to go all the way upstairs. Yeah, it has that particular Wayne shot that they that they develop, which was actually pretty interesting the way they did it. He was about to go ask the um, the usher, which actually has a very good shot where. You see like a split screen. You see the Usher and Wayne, you know, just trying to take him uh, all, all the way to tell him to call the police about what's going on. Until the Usher actually kills Wayne. While you see um, Tom on the other side, you know, playing the piece. Uh, that was very well done that they shot that. I couldn't believe it. So it does have that that Hitchcock uh, aesthetic quality right there, or or even Brian De Palma for that matter, because even Brian De Palma has done some split screens uh, on his um, suspense thrillers. And if that wasn't enough, uh, Ashley decided to leave um, in the hall and trying to search for Wayne, and even she got killed too by the same usher. They actually kill them inside an out of order bathroom. So they left the bodies inside. Um, also earlier in the film they even um, show the dead body of Wayne just when the, when the usher was dragging him around and already you know he was being so shocked when he saw that um, all the way up on top of the roof. And that's where, you know, <laughs> the killer phrase that you never saw a dead body before. <laughs> yeah. So he continues to go around playing those uh, pieces until it's time to finally play the note that that he got um, stage fright for. Was he decided to play the Senequet as the killer's request. So he begins to play all the notes, only to discover what's going to happen next. And then, after what happened, he decided to have Emma sing uh, while he was trying to find out um, what's going on. And trying to find out who the killer is. Until the end of the movie. It's a very fast paced thriller. Seeing that this is the first time I saw the movie, so I, I could definitely see what was going on. And it's pretty well done. I mean, even though, particularly, this was actually shot uh, on digital. And this was done by Spanish filmmakers and the crew. So this is actually done in Spain. So they did manage to use some green screens on some of the shots that he used uh, just to develop a 3D effect. And all these uh, camera angles that they had to move around, like they had to go, they had to move very tilted on the corner, on the side of where we see like a crowd of, of the audience around. There's like so many people on, on the, uh, so many people on the stage, as you can see, while you see uh, Tom on the side just playing the piece, you can see how nervous and attention that he's feeling already. He's feeling very scared and frightening that he's going to get killed if he doesn't do what he says. It's amazing. 
Um, the way they shot this movie was well done, well made, and well acted. It's a great cast. Uh, Elijah Wood did a very good job playing Tom Selznick. I mean, we definitely know how he feels. Uh, he, I can understand how people felt when they suddenly get stage fright while, while trying to play a perfectly good piece. I mean, he's very talented. He definitely knows what he's trying to do, but he's still feeling the attentions that he's getting from the audience. So I can understand that. Um, and Elijah Wood did a very good job because even though for him, he even mentions that uh, prior to his performance that he did, he did play piano before when he was very young, so he basically knew about what's going on here. He just didn't know about all the notes that happened, so he actually had a teacher to help him out. So he, so he did what he could in order for him to play more accurately. So I'm, I'm glad to see that he got to play a role that's very different. And it's good because Elijah Wood is a very good actor and I always love him when it comes to films that he has done back in the late 80s, uh, early 90s and so on. I mean I always loved him in films like Radio Flyer, The War. Uh, I know Paradise was a good film too, I believe so. And I'll be honest with you, I actually did did my North. <laughs> I didn't like The Good Son, though, but at least he was good in it. And, and I know he did all the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah, Deep Impact, uh, <laughs> come to mind. And even The, the Faculty. <laughs> so th this was a great performance for him. John Cusack... Uh, Tremendously did a great job playing the villain in this movie. And by the way, his character is named Clem. As we learned already, that um, he's the assassin um, who is about to assassinate uh, him. Yeah, he even gives him a warning when he did that one shot. And yeah, no one seemed to notice, too. That's what I noticed. That's, what, that's what's frightening about that. Uh, Carrie Boucher did a great job uh, portraying the, the actress, who happens to be his wife, Emma. Um, even though that wasn't her singing voice, still, yeah, they had a, uh, a different person named Alice Ella to do so, so I guess they wanted to make it this way. Because I don't think she can sing. Also, Don McManus was very hilarious as his best friend. Uh, Norman, yeah, because I remember that one shot where he was just, he found a note where they're actually making fun of him, calls him Tom Felsnick, and he says, very funny, as he takes out the the paper and just throws it out and he says, he says, very funny, you fucking assholes, yeah. But you do get to hear some wonderful music um, that's orchestrated, done very well, so it has that tension. But you already get the suspense already coming from the side of uh, Tom when he's listening to um, the killer's voice, yeah, Clem. And it was great to see Alex Winter again. I hardly ever see him in movies these days. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's good to see him actually play a different role. And yes, he also became the assistant uh, of the killer. Because he actually goes around killing the two people. And he's actually very good. I mean, everybody was good in the film. Um, including that bitchy... Uh, <laughs> Ashley, I mean, I, I didn't like her at this point, but I guess what she got was she, she had her coming. Um, but hey, he had to take the risk to um, get over it, and, and he's trying to uh, stop the killer from from hurting his wife and everyone else. Um, it was a very risky project, but it really works so well, and it really shows that that we hardly ever get any uh, suspense thrillers like this anymore. And that's the problem, too. So, coming from a, um, a small uh, budget, uh, it really worked. 
I also love the stunts that they used in the movie where we see Elijah Wood and John Cusack battling each other on the light fixture catwalk, you know, as they swing it around and then Elijah Wood actually hangs onto the ledge and trying to, to get up while Cusack actually picks him up. I mean, even though the gun was also inside one of the fixtures that got stuck inside before they, they almost fell. Very well done. And by the way, this movie previously came out on Video On Demand uh, back in January, as I found out. And it actually came out in limited theaters, too, in March of 2014. So I, I think I've heard much of it, but I didn't see it uh, until recently. So I, at least I had a chance. But it's good to see that uh, the writing was very well done, coming from Damien Giselle, because... After all, before he went on to do Whiplash and, and La La Land, this was definitely the perfect piece for him to do an up-teen thriller, and it works. So he definitely knows what he was doing, and, and the fact that it had to do with music. So, there you go. So, it makes sense, because uh, I think he did a lot of music, too, as I found out. And Eugene O'Mara did a very good job directing it too. I mean, he definitely figured out all the shots that he wanted. I mean, so they develop it and it works. I mean, he wanted the shot to be perfect, so it makes you feel like like if, if Brian De Palma had came back and directed this movie again, like he did in the past. So it has that feel, or even when Alfred Hitchcock did all this um, back in the 50s and 60s, in a way. So this was very well done. And I guess you could say it almost has a bit of a phone booth type of style. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, when, when it comes to the concept, because they're both very similar. You know, where we have to deal with an assassin that, that you basically hear on the phone, and, and he actually friends the victim. That if you don't do what you say, then, then you're going to get killed. So... It has that basic premise here. Um, anyway, it's a very well done film. Um, I highly recommend it. And I'm glad to see that you know there are critics out there who did enjoy it. And I have to agree with them on this one. Uh, uh, if you ever find the movie on Blu-ray um, and DVD if, by any chance, uh, check it out. If your local Dollar Tree has it... Um, you might be lucky, but otherwise, I guess if you can't find it anywhere else, maybe you can go online and, and find a copy somewhere so you get a chance to see it. Because, yeah, um, especially if you love Elijah Wood and John Cusack, and I know I love these guys too. They're very, very great, talented actors, still working today. And I also forgot to mention uh, there was... Uh, a bit of a cameo in the film that that's only in the beginning of the movie. They actually had D. Wallace Stone from E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Cujo. She actually does the voice of an interviewer who was about to interview uh, Tom after what he experienced uh, a long time ago about the stage fright while performing that piece, La Cinequette. It's good to hear her. It, it actually happened while he was uh, dressing up while he was inside the limo. So anyway, I give Grand Piano five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.